We want to look more deeply into gathering evidence of learning, and triangulation is the model we're exploring. So what exactly is triangulation? It involves gathering evidence of student learning over time from three different sources observation, conversation, and product. We can then compare these different samples of evidence to each other to get as accurate a picture as possible of student learning. We're looking at conversations that people have in the classroom, and the conversations could be teacher, student, students with each other. Looking at learning through three different ways, right? So if we're having conversation, it's not just having a, a chat with our students, but it's important that we record the results of this so that we know that, okay, I'm assessing something now through our conversation. You mean recording them on a computer or recording what they're doing? Maybe you can elaborate on that. I think it would depend on the context. Let's say they're doing interviews in an English class. I might record it with video so that I have that, um, evidence. I have that evidence. Or as they're talking to each other and as they're interviewing, I might have a checklist and I'm just recording. Had great body language, um, was not mumbling, used correct sentence structure, etc. So it could be through video, but it could also just be through checklists or anecdotal comments you know, next to their names in a, in a marking book. Observations? For observation, students are busy working on something. You know, they're working on a project and I'm walking around maybe with a checklist or something like that so that I have a record of it. And products. And the product. Product is important. You know, quizzes, projects, different things that they are creating. But I think that idea of could this be something that we give for homework? What do you think about that? Is it fair to assess something that's being given for homework? My gut feeling is that no, because you're not really there to observe them as they're doing that homework. So it wouldn't really be a fair assessment. You're only seeing one piece of the puzzle. And it's interesting that you're talking about fairness, because I really believe that fairness is at the heart of triangulating. I mean, we're able to observe students by paying attention to conversations, nurturing those conversations because of the work that we're providing in the classroom by having people able to produce different products that show evidence of their learning. Each student has the opportunity to be evaluated in a way that is fair to them. It's the differentiation that is developed as a result of incorporating this into a teaching and learning practice. Would you make things really transparent to the students in terms of the observations, conversations, and products so that they're aware of the process too? The student is part of this process. So transparency is key. Yeah, and I think it's only fair, like it's good practice or it's just nice to let people know, by the way, what you're doing right now, I am recording. This is the checklist that I will be using as you are doing this activity. <laughs> and they may have helped create that checklist. Yes. Yeah. yeah. One thing that's really kind of bugging me a bit is it seems like it's almost overwhelming. Am I supposed to do this all at the same time? It seems like it's a lot of work for the students and the teachers. I think the answer is less that you're doing it all the time, but that it's a process that's happening over time. We're not constantly you know, evaluating the same thing by talking about it and looking at it and, and assessing a final product, but that I'm aware that over time I'm not only assessing in one way. I'm not always giving quizzes, and I'm not always only having conversations. It makes me think of that parable, you know, of the elephant and the blind man. You know, there were blind men that were standing around an elephant, and they were each asked to say, like, what is this that, that you're standing next to? And one of them was feeling only the, the tail, and so he said it was a rope. And another person was only feeling the, the trunk, so he said it was a hose. Because they were only looking, um, you know, figuratively speaking, at one part of it, they weren't able to really figure out what the whole thing was. Pretty much the same as when we're in our classrooms. If we're able to look at the different elements, if over time I'm assessing through a quiz, interviews, and then maybe another quiz, and creating posters, and using a Google Slides, a collaborative activity of some sort, then I'm able to, if we go back to our parable of the elephant, put all the pieces of the elephant together to come up with the elephant. So to summarize, so instead of saying, all right, I'm just going to be looking at product all the time and quizzing them, you're really going to mix it up. And with that, you'll get a more complete picture. And that really answers my question. You're not doing it all at once. It's over time. That's right. It is over time, but you're beginning with the end in mind. So you have a plan and everyone is part of the contract. It's a learning contract that really exists between students and teachers. Yeah. Interesting. So you're really doing it together. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, that's what I would say. Um, I mean, if you think about it, talking, looking, creating, it's a very collaborative process to get a good handle on what it is students know and understand and can do. One of the reasons also that we're, you know, we're assessing in different ways is so that we can compare these things against each other. So that, let's say I, do, I give a quiz and everybody gets a certain mark on a quiz, 
that I'm able to then compare that mark to the results of the conversation assessment or the results of an observation assessment to see if, am I really getting the full picture? Am I really seeing the elephant in the room? Yeah, and when we get that clearer picture, we're able to adjust our teaching accordingly. 